This video will demonstrate how to prepare a partial IFRS Statement of Comprehensive Income, including adjustments to income from continuing operations, discontinued operations, and earnings per share disclosures. So here we have Faldo Corporation, public company, has 100,000 common shares outstanding, uh, reported income from operations before tax of 2710000 and there's some additional transactions not considered in that. Uh-oh, we might have to do a few things with this. So right out of the gates, what does the first sentence in itself tell you? What do you deduce that you might have to be prepared for? Is a public company and has 100,000 common shares. That you're going to be figuring out earnings per share, so it's going to be IFRS. for us. That's right. So this, you need earnings per share. That alone, uh, Ben, does not necessarily mean that this is an IFRS problem because remember under ASPE, EPS is an optional disclosure, but there's one other thing just before that 100,000 common shares that it's a public company automatically means IFRS. A privately held company can report under ASPE, but publicly traded companies must report under IFRS. So that first sentence alone sets the stage for the type of company you have, okay? During the year, they sold equipment for 140 with an original cost of 80 and accumulated depreciation to date of 360. The company had a DO that operated at a loss of 290. Oh, look at that, before tax. And assume that it meets the criteria for a DO and the loss on the operation of the discontinued subsidiary was 90,000 before tax and the loss on disposal was 200. So you can see that 290,000 is comprised of 200,000 being a loss on disposal, and the other 90 is by continuing to operate it. 520,000 was received as a result of a lawsuit, and before that decision, legal counsel was uncertain about the outcome of the suit, so they had not established a receivable. And then during the year, they reviewed its accounts receivable and determined that 54000 that had been carried for previous years appeared unlikely to be collected and no allowance was previously set up for that. And during an internal audit, discovered that amortization of intangible assets was understated by 35000 and that was charged against retained earnings. So prepare an income statement for the year, starting with income from continuing operations before tax. So this basically tells you you don't have to do the full thing from the very top because you're not given that information anyway. You're not given sales, or operating expenses, whatever, but you are told the starting point. And on an exam, I wouldn't tell you the next part. I wouldn't say calculate EPS as it should be shown because now you know that this is an IFRS company and EPS is a required disclosure. So that's all I would say. Create an income statement for me, basically in good form with proper disclosures. And what it does here, of course, is it tells you to assume a tax rate of 25%. Title, of course, Baldo Corp. Come statement. It tells us our starting point income from continuing operations before income tax. What is our income from continuing operations before tax? It's 2.71 mil. Well, that's the number you start with. But as you can see here, is that there are some transactions that are not considered in that. Ah, uh, yeah. So we need to make some adjustments so that we have the right starting point. So I'm just going to put in brackets and say, so for our purposes, I'm going to use just the word adjusted here. So that tells us that we need to make adjustments. So our income from continuing operations is stated. That's the starting point before our adjustments. So 2710. What adjustments do we have to make to that? The easiest thing to do is go item by item because it says these things have not been considered and then determine whether or not that needs to be factored in. And if it does need to be factored in, what's the adjustment? So let's start with the equipment. Is there something in this equipment sale that needs to be included? They sold it for 140. These are called the proceeds. When we're told how much we sell something and we know what it originally cost and what the accumulated depreciation is, what is cost minus accumulated depreciation? What does that equal? Net book value. Net book value, right? NBV. Now, we can also call that book value or carrying value. Well, proceeds minus net book value results in what? 
a profit or a loss, right? So this could be a gain or a loss. Well, was this equipment sold for a gain or a loss? Gain. 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 And how do you know this, Ben? So the proceeds are 140000 and the net book value is? 44. 44, which is 80000 minus the accumulated depreciation of 36. So the net book value is 44. And that equals, if we take 140 minus 44, that is $96,000 gain. Well, that's one of the things we need to make sure that we adjust in our operating income then. So gain on sale of equipment. You can also call that gain on disposal of equipment. That's more the common term. We use disposal to represent the sale of something or scrapping of something, right? Even if you, so any getting rid of something is considered to be a disposal, whether you sell it, scrap it, whatever. So gain on disposal of $96,000. Company had discontinued operations. Well, right away, looking at this piece, is this something I need to do to adjust my income from continuing operations? Or can I save this until my discontinued operations section? I can save it, right? Now, this 520,000 lawsuit, is that something that should be included in income or not? Yes. Yes. Now, the reason why is because the company is suing somebody else, right, for a breach of contract. Uh, before the decision, the, the lawyers didn't know. They, they couldn't predict. So uh, because, you know, they're hoping and nothing was recorded, this is all gravy. So it's other, definitely, and it is, uh, we call it a settlement of lawsuit. So this is all gravy, 520K all in. Now, during the year, they looked at their accounts receivable, 54,000 that had been carried over was not likely to be collected. So they got a serious deadbeat here. And then it looks like that the deadbeat's not going to pay. And the key there is that no allowance for doubtful accounts was previously set up. So I don't know if you remember from your previous course, accounts receivable allowance for doubtful accounts. We'll cover that a little bit later on, right? But we, we normally, as part of the normal course of business, we set up an estimate for what our uncollectible accounts might be. But in this particular case, no allowance is previously set up. So this is basically telling you, yeah, we need to record this as a write-off of accounts receivable. In essence, that's what they're doing. And then now, an internal audit discovers that amortization was understated net of tax and that amount was charged against retained earnings. Do we need to include this in an adjustment to our starting point? It's on that statement of changes equity, you wouldn't pull it through your income statement. Okay. Yeah, this amount was charged against retained earnings and it's related to a prior period. That's the key. Anything that's discovered that is a potential error or misstatement, overstatement in a previous year, you can't adjust to your income this year because that throws off the income. So what we would need to do is make that adjustment to retained earnings, and that's in the statement of changes of equity or statement of changes in retained earnings, and we would restate the financial state so that the comparative statements are correct. So this one we would ignore. So those are the only three items that we have. So we could say that we have our final adjusted income, and that's going to be 3272000. So we have income from continuing operations before income tax, and we've made our adjustments, so that's our starting point. What's the next line? The amount of tax? The taxes, income tax expense, because right? that item was before tax. And what is our income tax expense? I think it's at 25 percent, right? So you could just say at 25%, or you could do the calculation 3272 times 25%, whatever, but that is 818. You can put a negative or leave it. We both know that the taxes are negative. And this now gives you income from continuing operations. What's next? Right on, Drew, right on, discontinued operations. Here we have a loss on operation or operating, what are you going to call it, uh, of the DO. And we're going to put net of tax. But what is, how much is the tax adjustment? 
Would it be 22500 It would be 22500 because it says that the before tax loss on operating it was 90 and we know our tax rate is 25%, which means the after-tax number, of course, is the other 75%, which is 67500 The two numbers must add up to the before-tax gain or loss. 67.5 and 22.5 adds up to 90. We're good. Now we have our loss on disposal of the DO. And what is uh, the tax on that again, Drew? 50,000. 50,000. So net of tax of 50,000. And that means the after-tax amount is? 150. 150, that's right. 150, 150,000. And the two will add up to a total loss. And that's 217,500. And then our last item, of course, is the net income. And just make sure that you either add or subtract the DO correctly. So these are losses. So we go from income from continuing operations after tax of 2,454,000. And we're going to subtract the, the DO, 2,236,500, right? So I'm done. I can go on to my next question now. Earnings per share. Earnings per share. Please don't forget the earnings per share. Now let's just say EPS. And how are we going to report our EPS? So you have income from continuing and discontinued operations, just like the last one we did, net income. So three line items. So what is the EPS on the continuing operations? Okay, then that's uh, 24.54. Uh, so I'll just show the calculation. 2,454 divided by 10,000 uh, common shares. And what about the DO? 2.18. Positive or negative? Negative. Negative, because that's a loss on the DO. That is um, 217,500, and of course, divided by 100,000. And your net income, of course, one minus the other, 2.36. But that should also you, you know, be provable vertically and horizontally, right? Because if you also take the 2,300,000 or 2,36,500, and again, divide by 100 common shares. That's the same thing. So there you have it. 